We're really happy to welcome to the podcast now rising 154 pound contender Sebastian the Towering Inferno Fundora. Sebastian, welcome and welcome to the Hall of Fame. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Uh, this event right here is pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before you came over to interview with us, I see it's a tough walk to get from one place to another without getting mobbed by fans asking for autographs and selfies. Were, were you expecting that? Were you ready for that? What's that like for you? I didn't expect that much, but uh, the last time I went to a, a fight, I think it was the Charlotte Castaño fight, it felt uh, it was the same reaction with the fans. So uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's, it's, it's the hard work showing off now. Right. We last talked to you on the podcast before your fight with Eric and Um That felt, apart from being a terrific fight and a candidate for fight of the year, it felt even though we've been following you for a while, that that was the fight maybe that's lifted you on to another level and, and made fans aware of you a lot more. Have you noticed a difference in fan response to you since that fight? Yes, I definitely feel more respect. Mm. You know, before it was just the high and uh, that was the thing to talk about. But now <laughs> it's actually this boy can fight. Right. Uh, um, he can do something in the division. Yeah. It's a big gut check moment for you mm. in that fight. What was going through your mind when you went down? And that I just felt like I needed a breather. Okay. Once I got back up, I, I continued my job. Mm -hmm. I thought I was winning the fight, and uh, I did. <laughs> yeah, you look more frustrated than anything when you went down. Of course, no boxer wants to uh, <laughs> yeah. take a knee or, or go down, but uh, I had to. I had to to uh, recollect myself, mm -hmm. and, and it worked out. Mm -hmm. And then on, on the flip side, toward the end of the fight, of course, the, the story becomes Erickson Lubin's face, and it was just swelling significantly. Did you feel like the end the end was close and, and you just had to go in there and throw a few more punches? It was the, it the eighth round. I saw his face start swelling up like bad. And I, I was thinking, but you know, you're worried about fighting. You don't really think too much about it. But I had a, time, I had a moment to, to, to really like stand back and look. And uh, I was like, no, nah, they have to stop this fight. This is, this is bad. I never seen anybody like this. I mean, I swollen people up before, but not all over their faces. It's like a, a beehive went after him. Mm, right. We talked about this before, of course, and you hear it a lot. 154 pounds is an exciting division, especially at the top. There's some big matchups. You were ringside for Jamel Charlo and Brian Castaño. What did you think of that fight? I think it was a great fight, but uh, it happened the way I thought it was going to happen. Okay. You know, uh, Charlo loses his power, and it, and it got him the knockout. Okay. And so there, there's a little bit of a tug of war almost going on right now over who gets the next shot at Charlo, who gets the next title shot. It, it, there's uh, Tim Zhu keeps putting his name in there. I believe he's one of the alphabet mandatories, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Would you, in your ideal world, is, is Charlo next? Is it maybe a showdown with Tim Zhu next? What's what's your ideal next, uh, next fight? If we can get Charlo next, uh, that's what I want next. If, okay. if that's the fight we can get next, that's definitely the fight I want. You know, um, he has all the belts. If okay. I can grab them all at one time, I'm definitely going to do it. Th th is there any part of you that's like, I'm stepping up gradually. I just beat Lubin, which was a tremendous performance and a tremendous step, but maybe there should be a couple more progressions uh, before you fight Charlie? No, um, we fought. this. That was my my third WBC eliminator, but my fourth elimin title eliminator. So uh, I've proven myself four times already. I'm the WBC mandatory. I have the, the, the interim title. I'm ready. Mm. I'm ready. You also mentioned when we talked to you before the fight, and, and I think you've said it subsequently, said if necessary to get a big fight, you could shave seven pounds off yes. as well <laughs> and look at somebody I'm, like an Errol Spence. How seriously would you think about that if that came along? Well, it depends if... Uh, there's no action for me at 154. If no one wants to fight me at 154, you know, I might look down at 147 or I might go up to 160, sure. you know? There's, uh, there's plenty of options. It's just uh, uh, we work so hard at 154. Sure. I want, I, I, I established myself at this weight. I want the titles at this weight class as well. You said that Charlo Castaño too played out pretty much exactly as you expected. Uh, let's look into your crystal ball. What do you see happening if Terence Crawford and Errol Spence fight this year, as, as a lot of people are expecting, is close to done. How would you see that fight going? I'm going to go for Spence. I do think Spence, I like his style, the way he fights. He like the, He's a pressure fighter. Uh, I, I think so. Boxing pressure. But uh, I like that. And uh, I like the dog in him. Uh, that's why I'm going for him. But Crawford showed a lot, a lot of gut, too. 
when he fought his last fight, I think it was his last fight with, with um, Porter. Porter, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, yeah, that made me think a little bit about that fight after that. So, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, uh, he stopped him. He stopped yeah. him. And uh, I never seen Porter go down like that before. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I still have it like a 60 40, maybe a 55. Uh, 55, was it 45 55 or something like that? I don't something know. Like I don't that. know the math. My math's off right now. Slightly but favoring yeah, Spence. Slightly favoring yeah. him. Were, yeah. were you surprised at all how convincingly he beat your Dennis Ugas? Because that looked to me like a fight where an upset was possible going in. You know, I didn't doubt Ugas. I didn't think he was going to win. But I didn't doubt that he could do something. Uh, but I, I, I don't know what he worked in camp. He didn't. I don't think he showed it in the fight. Uh, Spence is another you have to you, you another type of fighter you where you have to prove it to him I think to gain his respect he's not gonna he's gonna go in there and he's not gonna respect you mm. and that's that's how a good fighter should go in as it mm. but uh Ugas never had the time to 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 mm. demand the respect from him or he never used what he needed to do for that fight so uh, mm. that's why that that's he stopped him didn't he the 10 yeah. round stoppage yep. sure. yeah right, yeah, yeah and, uh, that's why that happened when do you hope to be in the ring? Do you know if there are talks with Charlo at this point with your camp? Or I, I don't know. The last thing I heard from him was that he's busy. So <laughs> that, oh. that's, <laughs> that's what he said. Uh, we're, we're supposed to be fighting August, September. Okay. So we'll see who we have lined up. There's talks of uh, Tony Harrison or, or, hmm. or uh, um, um, whoever else is down the line for the WBC. Uh, I'll fight for I'll fight anybody, but. You, know? you seem like the kind of opponent that a lot of fighters are going to be busy when your name comes <laughs> up. Um, you know, you're just you're just that kind of a guy. Um, are you sort of half expecting that. You know what? I'm just going to have to keep working to get my shot here. Yeah. Uh, well, with the four eliminators, uh, there's probably going to be another one coming up. <laughs> from from the, the way it looks like right now, it's probably going to be another one, and then another one, or someone's going to have to move out of the division. Right vacate the title right. then we'll become the WBC um, title the complete title uh, the complete champion but uh, we'll see we'll yeah. see I'm I want to take the fight I'm ready to take the fight you yeah. know we proved it plenty of times before uh, it's just up to them it takes two two to tango exactly right exactly. so coming here to Hall of Fame weekend this is such a unique situation of three classes going at, at once a lot of legends uh, are here or will be here from Roy Jones to Bernard Hopkins to Juan Manuel Marquez and so forth. Are there people that you're particularly looking forward to meeting that you've never met before, great boxers that you're looking forward to seeing while you're here? I know a couple of them already, so uh, it's exciting to see them again. You know, you can you always see them and like, wow, this guy's uh, this guy was a badass back then. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, Marquez, Marquez was one that I was excited to meet, and I met him uh, uh, at lunch. I met him at lunch today, and I took a picture with him. So you know what, if if, if it closes tomorrow, I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right, right. That's great. I mean, you, you guys kind of, like, in a sense, have a lot in common. Like, you're both guys who can box and technically very good, but half the time you're like, ah, screw it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, I can kind of see a connection there. Yeah. Whatever gets the job done faster. Right. You know, you don't get paid for overtime, and uh, that's what I feel. I feel more comfortable on the inside, you know. Uh, maybe not safer on the people looking outside, but that's <laughs> what I feel comfortable, right. you know. So, uh that's and, and it gets the job done always. So. Right. Yeah, it's it's remarkable to see how quickly things have kind of changed for you, in terms of you because you said at the beginning of the of the interview that it used to be people just wanted to talk about your height. We're I don't know 10, 12 minutes into this chat and we haven't asked you a thing about your height. <laughs> it's I mean it's still unique, but you've does it feel to you like you've just proven that you're much more than an oddity and someone that everyone has to take seriously yes yes i i think with the last fight i, I felt with the, my last three fights it, it, it's been proven over and over again that, that we, we are a fighter more than just a, a tall guy or a, right. a basketball player or a tall guy who doesn't <laughs> right. use his, his height for basketball or whatever it is you know uh, uh we've proven ourselves that, 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 that we're a good contender for the sport of boxing well, for what it's worth, looking at you, I can't guess where seven additional pounds to trim off are coming from. But if you say you can do 147, I guess I have to believe you, because so far the things you've said yeah. you can do, you've, <laughs> you've proven we're, we're exactly. legit. Exactly. And how much, finally, of an inspiration is it to be here? So many guys, so many different classes coming in, seeing you know the Hall of Fame. Obviously, you know you've got a lot of time to go, but you could think to yourself, eh, maybe 10 years. You know, this could be me. Definitely, I mean, do you definitely. think that kind of stuff? 
Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I've been seeing a couple of these guys with the rings already. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. oh, I need one of those now. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's it, it's uh the fact that they 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 let me have like um early field trip over here. So mm. uh, it it's good. It's good. It makes me ha gives me something other to um so, to look forward to. Right. You know, and um besides the belts itself, I this is another thing. You know. <laughs> yeah, this this qualifies as a pretty much an ultimate goal if you can uh, end up in here. Someday, definitely. So. All right, well, it's been a pleasure talking to you again, Sebastian, and uh, I think we said probably at the end of the first interview that it, we didn't think it would be the last time and we'd talk to you many more yeah. times. I think that that remains true. Hopefully we'll have you on the podcast many more of course, times. Of course, But uh, for now, just enjoy your weekend here in Canastota. Great talking to you. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks a lot.